Hey guys, it's Karen. I'm going to do a quick full market update. So looking at the Bitcoin price action, from a more macro point of view to kick things off, we can see how there's a range bond market. So between this rough 25.2K level to 15.5K, we were in this range for a long time. It's somewhat of a channel. And then we broke out above this and we back tested and we pushed up to here. We had a failed bounce of this upsloping trend line and then we went back down so the thing is if we lose this level so this rough 25.2k level because so far we've only had wicks below it but if we lose this level then technically there's actual very little in the way structurally till 22.20.3k sorry from a weekly point of view we can see how there's a huge imbalance here so between this wick to this wick here there's a huge imbalance so this might eventually get cleared here, maybe to 22.8k but what's interesting that bitcoin has a habit of doing its own thing. Bitcoin is an emotionally stable 13-year-old kid. It does its own thing. So that's something to be careful. The root to these things is never as, as you expect. Something else to also talk about is in that stream we spoke about last night, I expected a quick pop-up to 26, 26.5, 27k because we had certain key li liquidation levels. So this is the new indicators. So the MDX algo and our trend master have now fused. And if you are interested in these indicators and also joining an amazing community of like-minded professional traders and to really improve your investing and trading career, do Check out the link description below. But we have this pop up above, and we actually grab this liquidity here. So, this essentially, this 50x long leverage and this 100x long leverage. And so, this has been tapped. So, the question is now do we actually dump now to 22.5k, potentially 24k, to, to tap these much higher liquidation levels? So, for example, the 5x, 10x, 20x leverage. And naturally, if you're Entering trades based on high leverage, naturally, the higher the leverage, the closer the liquidation price levels are. And markets, as we know, move from liqu high liquidity to low liquidity, and it just circulates really. It's very cyclical. We have been range bound for a long time, and of course, we've had a pop back up, but in, in the grand scheme of things, it's just sometimes like two steps backwards and then two steps forward again. So it's just we're still back in this range. The range is still the range until it's broken. The question is, is this just a fake out just to grab some liquidity? We do have highs here and then before further dump. This is also a new feature, actually, the auto charting tools. So this is in interesting because it shows how it's a weekly open. So the 25.8K level is a key weekly open. So we actually, I was saying on Monday, for example, sometimes you have a fake out because it's a move called false move Mondays. And now we've actually went above it. So that's something to consider. So we're still above the weekly open. So this is good in some sense. And the question is, is this, was this complete bearish fake out and do we move back up higher, maybe to this high here? So that's something else to look out for. So looking at the long to short ratio, this is essentially looking at what proportion of the market is net long. So in other words, favoring a buying bias or net short. So in other words, having a selling bias, believing the markets can go down. We know that the market makes the fool out of the masses. And so if most of the retail traders, so more amateur beginner traders are net long, then the market's more likely to go down. And then vice versa, if most of the market is net short, the market's probably going to go up. So we can see how a lot changes. So we had this actual, this, we had the plateauing here, then we had this dump here. So it's just a long, the long short ratio went down and the open interest. So the open interest is the opening of positions. So we had a pop up in the open interest and the long short ratio went down. And so we actually had a pop up in the price action. Looking at the Ethereum price action, I explained how Ethereum for me is a bit of a weaker chart than Bitcoin. A friend actually spoke about this, who's been trading for 15 years. He's saying that, so this is like a head and shoulder pattern here. This is like a head and this is the other shoulder. This head is nicer because it's much higher than here. Sometimes it's, if it's very close by, then it's not as reliable. But to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of chart patterns, but I think it's quite nice how we've broken this. And so uh, technically speaking, there is actually very little on the way till this 14, 1.4K level. But the, until this is broken, we're still back up here. But this looks a bit weaker than Bitcoin, to be honest with you. And looking at this, so we've actually now flirting with the weekly open. So the weekly open now is 16.15. So if we get above that, then potentially we could get a move back up to this daily level, potentially, so 17.28. Yeah, but so so far the Bitcoin price actually still looks better. And this is really tying along with various things. For example, the ETH to Bitcoin dominance. Because often what happens is that all coins can move up in dollar value, but they could be losing Satoshi value. And so this is the question. This has been had it's been beaten quite badly for a while. This ETH to Bitcoin dominance. So the question is, if the ETH to Bitcoin dominance would pop up, then perhaps Bitcoin could move more relatively to Bitcoin. Looking at the Bitcoin dominance, not a lot has changed still. And I spoke about this. My bias hasn't changed really. We had this long, long sloping trend line from 2016, and eventually I would expect a touch point around this 58, 57k region. And the thing is, a lot of people I, was, I keep saying is people aren't used to this pop up. 
And when this happens, it eventually it will be a day of reckoning and people at high altcoin positions will get slaughtered. Yes, these altcoins can go up in dollar value, but they could be losing in terms of Satoshi value. Looking at the more four hour time frame here. So let's have a look. So this is actually a bit of a bullish structure now. So perhaps we get that. So we have this dump push up like this, but then this is now push up, push down. So we've actually taken out structures. Let me illustrate for you. You can see how there's higher highs and higher lows. So you know, perhaps you do get a pop up and question is, does that start the onset of the bleed for all coins? What's interesting is that the total crypto market cap actually fell below 1 trillion in a really, really long time. So it was actually in June, we actually had the, the first time actually since June, we've actually had a sub 1 trillion dollar market cap. So this is interesting. So I was, I was also been saying for a really long time how I didn't expect us to get above 1.26 trillion for a long time because it was, it was a key harmonic that we've spoken about. So that's just interesting to see how it spread out. But that's all I have to talk about for the crypto markets, a brief update. Moving on to other markets, so let's look at certain things like gold. Looking at the wider market, starting off with gold, gold has been a daily downtrend. And for the purposes of macro, it's been a downtrend. And so looking at the four-hour chart, we can also see it's been a bit of a downtrend as well. We've actually lost this low. So the question is, do we have a push back down to one of these levels? So if you draw Fibonacci actually from here to here, we're actually approaching a key 618 Fibonacci. So if we lose this, then you'll potentially get a move to the 1.9k level. A lot of you know as well, I gave I gave that trade last Friday. So this was this trade setup, essentially. I was I, I gave the trade in real time. And essentially, I entered my trade and within two minutes, like as quickly as possible, I post, posted in the chat. And essentially, this was a false breakout trade that I called last Friday. And it was here, actually. So it was a, I took the short. It was a 1 to 8 RR trade. So it's been one of the best trades I've taken, actually, for a couple of months. And this was nice. We locked profits here. Looking at other charts as well, now, of course, kicking it off with the US 500. And this is the top 500 US companies, generally speaking. And this has been in a bit of a downtrend as well. So on the daily chart, this is, it was uptrend up here, but then we actually had a breach of this low here. So we took on our structures. This could be a, potentially the beginning of a changing character. Okay. So then we had this higher, Sorry, this lower high. And question is now, do we have this downtrend and take out this low? This is just something else that I'm actually watching as well. Looking at the US 100 again, very similar structure. We had a run up here and then question is, do we take out this low as well? I find that very often the US 100 is very often correlated to Bitcoin and these risky assets. And it can often be a precursor. But if you look at this particularly, we've had this uptrend here. Question is, if you look at this, we've taken out some highs here. So question is, will this have a lower high and break down as well? And looking at the more four hour chart. So we have this push up, push down, push up, push down and push up. So hopefully we, if we take out this high, that'll be quite nice. It'll be very little on the way to here. But if we lose this low, then the, we could go back down to 14.8K level. For SPX, actually, I think the 4.3K level is very key, key, because that could be the first sort of warning sign of a macro reversal, because from a weekly point of view, it was quite a key level because on the way up here, it was actually formed a bit of support. So we lose this 4.3k level, then you can have a much further decline, really. Looking at certain quick Forex pairs as well, starting off with just the major pairs like Euro USD. So kicking off with some key major Forex pairs, the Euro USD is actually still above the weekly open of 1.069, but I actually, we had this breakdown below this low. This was a changing, uh, changing character. And essentially, I was explaining my setup of waiting for this price to go back to this supply block, order block, and the waiting for change in structure short, but this still I'm waiting for, and it hasn't happened. I'm just gonna put an alert here actually. And was still waiting for that. So New Zealand dollar, it hasn't been that many new setups so far, to be honest with you, for this. Pound dollar, again, still, still in a downtrend not identified a new, new setups. So for me, it's still trading scalps as specifically in gold, but also waiting for this setup. So for this, going back to this um, supply block here, order block. And then of course, we look at the USDJPY as well pair. This has been a strong uptrend here, up, up till here. So pretty much uptrend. So looking at the daily, yeah, it's been strong uptrend. And looking at the four hour chart, let's look. So yeah, so this, this is a key area of demand here. So I'd wait for a pullback to here. And then that might be a potential long setup here. But guys, thanks a lot for watching. Do subscribe. And of course, comment in the comment section below any specific video requests. And I'll make videos based on that topic.